The second speaker is Dr. Mike Lamont, Director for Accelerators and Technology at CERN. Needless to say, CERN is the, one of the best known and the most successful research infrastructures in the world. Since the establishment in 1954, CERN has been a model for many other facilities as well. Let us look at how they are tackling the sustainability issues. So, Dr. Lamont, please. Thank you very much, and a very warm welcome from CERN. And uh, thank you for the opportunity for the uh, to present sustainable research infrastructure for a sustainable world from a CERN perspective. So um, our goal, simply stated, is to understand the most fundamental particles and the laws of the universe. And of course, under, behind that, we have a wide ranging, diverse scientific program here showing that we work from low energy antiprotons all the way up to above petroelectron volts at heavy ion collisions. Um, four pillars underpin this mission. Um, research, naturally enough, this is what we're here for. Uh, co collaboration on a global scale. And of course, the technology and innovation that underpins what we do. This is, this is uh, cutting edge and it's hard and uh, really an important part of everything we do. Uh, something else we uh, invest a lot of time in too is education and training, both on site with postgraduates, uh, fellows, etc., but also um, off site with teacher training programs, um, outreach, and uh, uh, an extensive visitors program. We are a laboratory for people around the world. So here you see the distribution of all CERN users by country. Uh, so a user, we're talking the experimentalists and researchers who come to CERN either for the short term or longer term basis. And you see a breakdown by member state, associate member state, observers, and non-member states and territories. And I have to say this really is uh, a, a template for international scientific cooperation. One that has been picked up um, elsewhere. So I just flash a slide here from a presentation by Professor Chopper. Um, in uh, last year regarding Sesame, the light source in the Middle East, and you see the members of Sesame and the governance structure of this based on uh, CERN's conventions. And I say at this point, science is more interesting than cultural and, and ethical differences, but of course you've got to get to the science. A search, CERN as a research infrastructure, okay, we're looking to celebrate our 70th birthday in a couple of years. Um, and we, we've evolved before the RI concept uh, came online, but nonetheless, thanks to the governance and funding model that we enjoy, many of the ingredients are there. And we're fortunate enough to enjoy a clear mission, budgetary autonomy, managerial discretion, transparency and openness, really part of our culture. Um, however, we recognize that the RI paradigm is in demand. We've heard mention, of course, the European Commission, our, uh, our, our stakeholders, our member, our member states see this as something we should be embracing. And we're adapting uh, to make our role as a research infrastructure more explicit. And I think it's clear going forward that our sustainability is intimately linked to our success as a research infrastructure. Next slide, please. Sorry. That one. Uh, so, knowledge transfer. Um, we have a very active knowledge transfer uh, group here at CERN um, looking to push uh, technology to, out to society. Uh, just a snapshot of uh, some of the wide portfolio there, but something we re that really is uh, very much part of what we do. We also, within the knowledge transfer group, have a medical applications unit. And here, looking to push medical imaging, leveraging off of detector, uh, detector technology, of course, uh, hadron therapy, um, again, with uh, expertise in accelerators of, of, of obvious use here, um, radioisotopes and all radioisotopes for uh, radiobiology at the Medicis facility, and more recently, the use of 
very high energy electrons um, for flash therapy. This is using the X-band technology developed for click. And here you see um, a, a snap of the collaboration we have with the Cantonal Hospital in Lausanne for a clinical facility to, to uh, develop a pioneering development of this use of this uh, techniques. The UK commissioned a evaluation of the benefit that CERN derives from, that uh, the UK has derived from CERN. So this is a, a quite a long document, but just to highlight some of the, the um, features that came out. And if we look at the bottom line, you can see that they conclude that CERN's development and scientific goals drive technical advances in facilities and infrastructure. New innovations emerge underpinned by the technologies developed at and for CERN. And wider applications bring benefits to the UK researchers, consumers, patients, and society. So we, um, an independent re, um, evaluation of our performance as a research infrastructure, as you like, if you like. We can also, um, <laughs> I'm losing text here, but uh, there was also a cost benefit analysis. Um, Massimo Florio did a, a very interesting book on this deep analysis. And this from a presentation at council at the end of 2020. And here you see the evaluation of the benefits over the lifetime of the high luminosity of the LHC and the high luminosity LHC. So benefits coming to around 26 billion Swiss francs with a uh, cost baseline of around 22 billion Swiss francs, with a net present value of 3.4 uh, billion Swiss francs. So incredibly enough, the something as expensive as the LHC and the H high luminosity LHC, when a detailed cost benefit analysis is, is done, does provide a net value to society. Sustainability, um, CERN, obviously this is uh, underpins, uh, we really kind of part of our mission is to, to perform environmentally responsible research and we're committed to minimizing its environmental impact. I have to note in passing, we use 1.2 terawatts of electricity in an operational year, pulling largely from the French grid. So this is, um, a, a, which is a healthy mix of nuclear and renewables. So low carbon, footprint but of course we have to be clear on our messages there we have strong encouragement at present from our member states uh, who regard this as a critical issue and uh, really we're moving into a crisis mode in this regard and of course we recognize our moral obligations to fully engage and we're ramping up our efforts in this area so um, biannual environmental reports a very active energy management panel looking at exploitation measures, heat recovery, et cetera, consolidation, procurement and technology, and looking towards sustainable accelerators in the future. And we're all presently seeking ISO 50001 certification of our energy management program. Which brings me to the final slide. So closing remarks, uh, so CERN's Future sustainability lies in it continuing to host first class physics. Uh, as I said, it's our primary goal and to embrace the science, technology, motivation, and passion that goes with it. We foresee a flagship machine for the post LHC era as a driver in a competitive market. It is an amazing, a major investment that will have to be very well justified. And I think in this regard, the research infrastructure perspective is going to be vital, a framework for CERN as a driver of innovation, inspiration, and socioeconomic impact. We also note that we are uh, uh, amenable and uh, open to independent evaluation and cost benefit analysis to validate the RI, RI approach. Environmental sustainability is a crisis level challenge. Hopefully it will not be long, a long, long standing crisis level challenge, it's clearly going to be important going forward. Um, and we are attempting to demonstrate our commitment and adaptability and more generally stay, stay fully aware of our responsibilities 
and engage when appropriate. Okay, with that, uh, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. And the points like evaluation of the benefits to a specific country or cost on benefits analysis have been especially interesting.